Hello, Adam here with AJT Design. Have a video today for an injection fob. This is for Chevy trucks, GMC trucks, 2022 and newer um, the GMC Sierra Chevy Silverado. This is for the fob case. This is a Chevy one that looks like this with these buttons. So just out of the start, I will say this our case only fits this exact configuration right here. If any of these buttons are different, if you have a Tahoe, a Yukon Suburban, et cetera, any of this is different, um, it's not gonna work. Our case only has these specific buttons here. So the first thing to do is take this apart. What we wanna do is slide out the key. This button is missing because this has already been apart. And then here you can use this key actually to pry this back piece off. And this comes off actually pretty easily. This can be discarded. Next, a good time to just remove the battery, which we will save. Which comes off pretty easily as well. we'll save that. The other thing to note is this key, our fob does not have a place for this key. Unfortunately, the way GM designed it with this uh, molded over plastic piece, it was just not practical to design that in. So if you really like having this key in your fob, our product may not be the best fit for you. However, this could always uh, be placed on a key ring, hide a key, et cetera. It really depends on uh, how much you use it or depend on it. But for our product, this is not integrated. Next thing we wanna do is remove the, there's a side piece here and a side piece here. Um, I'm just trying to make sure this focuses. There's a little tab right in here. that has gotta come up. So you can either pry this up with a screwdriver or just let it break. This is really not a, um, a reversible process. Once you take this case off, it's never really the same again. So once you do this, you're kind of all in. But you take a screwdriver and you kind of pry this piece off, discard, and the other piece does pretty much the same thing, this chromed out piece like that. See, these are the tabs that hold it on. Comes together pretty easily. Now this is the more tricky part. This case has already been apart. So this, come, this piece comes off. However, as you can see along this perimeter, this piece is glued. So when you take yours apart for the first time, all of this is gonna be glued all along here. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to take um, a utility knife and cut it around there. And when you do that, you have to be very, very careful that you don't damage this board here because if you do that, uh, kind of game over. What I found works best, I took a couple of these apart, is to cut under this here and simply use a screwdriver to pry it apart. And once you get it started, it will just kind of uh, come apart. You can you know, cut a little bit to help yourself, but you can just kind of pull it apart and it will separate on the glued joint. So with that apart, this piece is discarded, this piece is discarded, and we have what we need, which is basically just the circuit board and the battery. Now it comes from the, e the easy part, which is assembling our case. So you take the top half and you load in the buttons and you wanna make sure you get these in there the right way. It is possible to fit the, the wrong buttons in the wrong location or have them upside down. So you just wanna double check that before you put it all together. these in, the gasket goes on top of that, and you can flip it over and check. It should look just like that, and all the positions should line up with the factory fob. Next, we're gonna insert the battery plus side down, as indicated. Then we'll put the board in. And the board is located on these four hole pinholes like that. However, when you let go, it's gonna kinda of wanna tilt up like that. What I found works best is to kind of press it down on this side so you've got you know, these two pin holes holding it in really solid. You'll have a little bit of a gap there. You take this case and you kinda of just sandwich it like this. And if you do it right, it should go together very easily. If you see any binding, uh, start, you know, start over and do it again. That's not right. So. With that, like that, we just have to take the screws, 
and put it together. As with all these cases, don't use Loctite. Get them snug, but don't over tighten. Let's test all the functionality of the buttons. You will notice these buttons may be a little bit harder to press than on the factory fob. That was kind of part of the nature of the beast. The other thing I will say is when you put this thing together for the first time, there's a slight amount of what I might call a break-in period where you need to kind of press these hard several times over and over again. But you should feel that positive button feel on all the buttons. Um, if you have any issues with that, I'd recommend taking it apart, maybe removing the battery so your truck isn't going nuts and just going through these for a few minutes. Um, but once it's done, it's broken in a little bit. And again, which will get uh, better over time. Everything should be good. So there it is. This is our case for the Chevy Fob. If you've got one of these and you don't like it, um, it's a weird shape. I've, I've always thought these were weird looking. I don't know why they made it so asymmetrical. It looks like a little wing. Um, you want something a little different looking, a little better. We've got this for you. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching.